Welcome to Agile Principle Run and Cut. And today we have a rather interesting topic, don't we? What are we talking about today? Today we're going to be uh, tackling Agile software development. Oh, cool. <clears throat> Correction. We are not going to call it Agile software development. We're just going to call it Agile. Yes. That's what we should call it. Uh huh. We've got a whole stack of research and reports. Nice. Uh, including some pretty fascinating insights from the Government Accountability Office. You mean the man in black, the GAO, right? Yeah, you know the GAO. Yeah, yeah. About how federal agencies are adopting Agile. Pretty interesting stuff. So by the end of this deep dive. Okay. You'll understand the core principles of Agile. Okay. Grasp the differences between the various agile frameworks right and learn some best practices for successful implementation sounds good you know what's really intriguing about agile what's that it's adaptability uh -huh. it's not just about software right it's really more of a uh, a philosophy yeah a philosophy okay. applicable to tons of different projects and teams that's right and let's not forget product because you know there are some products that just keep getting refreshed over and over again uh -huh. and the cycle never ends okay the key is you know understanding which keep going agile flavor flavor best suits your needs i like that analogy me too so let's demystify these agile flavors okay what are we dealing with here well a lot of the skeptics are going to say no but agile is not about software it's not about tools it's not about techniques agile is first and foremost the mindset that enables you pivot to the ever-changing world around you that's how i see it yeah so think of Agile as an umbrella term, okay. encompassing various frameworks, yeah. each with its own... Uh, strengths and weaknesses. Strengths and weaknesses, exactly. So it's like choosing the right tool from a toolbox. Precisely. Okay. Let's start with Scrum. Oh. Arguably the most popular Agile framework. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, you need to be careful. You know, there are a lot of people who like Kanban. Okay. So, you know, the Kanban zealots, they may challenge you on that one. So... Let's be a little bit conservative in what we're saying. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if you could say arguably, but anyway, continue. Yeah. It's structured around short, okay. intensive work cycles called sprints. Sprints. Imagine like a rugby team Good. intensely focused on achieving a goal okay. within a specific time frame. So Scrum is all about speed then. Well, we need to be careful here because we don't want to sacrifice speed for accuracy. So it's not just about speed. Okay. Well, while speed is definitely a factor, uh -huh. Scrum emphasizes delivering value quickly okay. and also adapting to change. Adapt it. Okay. So a Scrum team typically has a Scrum master okay. who facilitates the process. Uh -huh. A product owner representing the customer's needs. Mm. And a development team responsible for building the product or software. So I've also heard terms like artifacts yeah. and ceremonies associated with Scrum. Right. What is that all about? <laughs> Good question. In fact, the zealots will get mad if they hear you call them ceremonies because okay. they try to scrub that word from the Agile archives way back. They don't use the word ceremonies quite a lot anymore. They use the word event. Yeah. So the event really means meeting. Okay. So artifacts are tools like the product backlog, mm -hmm. which is a prioritized list of features. Gotcha. And the sprint backlog, okay. which outlines the work for a specific sprint. Got it. Ceremonies are regular meetings, oh, okay. such as sprint planning, uh -huh. daily scrums, okay. sprint reviews, oh. and sprint retrospectives. So they ensure everyone's on the same page. Exactly. And foster that continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. So to wrap it up nicely, to remember, Scrum has a three-five-three three configuration. Yeah. Three roles, five events, three artifacts. Three roles: product owner, Scrum master, developers. Okay. The five events: the sprint planning, the sprint itself, the daily Scrum, the sprint review, the sprint retrospective, and then the artifacts: product backlog, sprint backlog, and the increment. Mm -hmm. We also call it PSI, potentially shippable increment, in some circles. Yeah. Okay, so Scrum is our rugby team. Right. All about sprints and structure. Yeah. And what about Kanban? So if Scrum is a rugby match, okay. Kanban is a smoothly flowing river. That's right. And just for context, Scrum, when we talk about Scrum, we often say it is iteration-based. When we talk about Kanban, we say flow-based. So you're right on the money with that one. Interesting. Okay. So keep talking about Kanban. It visualizes the workflow, mm -hmm. limits work in progress, okay. and maximizes efficiency. Gotcha. Imagine a Kanban board okay. with columns representing different stages of work. 
like at... Like to do, doing, and done. Oh, so like those online project management tools. Exactly, like Jira, Confluence, Monday.com, even Smartsheet. Everyone's trying to go that okay. to do, doing, done format that Kanban offers these days because uh -huh. it's wildly popular and extremely effective. Uh -huh. And I always recommend to people before jumping into the software, okay. maybe you want to have a to do, doing, done, physical, in a half by 11 board. You can find these at Home Depot anywhere. Okay. They really make for a really good visualization of where you are in the project. Exactly. Uh, a Kanban board allows you to see bottlenecks and keep work moving smoothly. Gotcha. It's a great choice when you need flexibility Pretty and awesome. responsiveness to changing priorities. Makes sense. Yeah. So we got the structured scrum uh -huh. and the flowing Kanban. Band. Right. What other flavors are out there? Well, there's extreme programming. Okay. Or XP. XP. Which, as the name suggests, okay. takes software development best practices mm. to the extreme. Extreme. It emphasizes practices like pair programming. Pair programming. Where two developers collaborate on the same code. Got it. And test-driven development, or TDD. Where tests are written well, before the... Before tests before code. Yeah. That seems a little counterintuitive. It might seem unusual. Yeah. But TDD helps ensure high-quality code from the outset. Okay. By writing tests first, mm -hmm. developers define the desired behavior of the code up front. Right. Leading to cleaner and more modular code. Exactly. When I teach my students this stuff, I tell them red, green, clean. You're going to write a test. It's going to be red. It's going to fail. Right. Then you got to get it to green. You're going to make the test pass by writing enough code to make the test pass. And then you're going to clean it up. And that pretty much sums it up. So it's like having a blueprint for your code yes. before you start building. Exactly. Yeah. And TDD isn't the only test-focused framework. Okay. There's also acceptance test-driven development right. or ATDD. ATDD where acceptance tests uh -huh. focusing on user needs and business requirements okay. are written before development begins. So it ensures the software meets user expectations from the start. Yes. Interesting. So it seems like testing is crucial in these agile frameworks. That's right. Is there a common thread here? Absolutely. What is it? Whether it's TDD or ATDD. Okay. These practices emphasize building quality into the software uh -huh. from the very beginning, rather than trying to bolt it on later. Gotcha. This proactive approach yeah. aligns perfectly with Agile's core value, which is delivering high quality software okay. iteratively. Iteratively. All right, so we have a sense of these frameworks. Yeah. But the GAO report uh -huh. highlights challenges federal agencies face right. when transitioning to Agile. Right. What are some of these fertile? Well, one key challenge mm -hmm. is shifting from a traditional mm -hmm. siloed work environment okay. to one that emphasizes collaboration and trust. Collaboration and trust. Agile thrives on open communication right. and transparency. Okay which can be a real cultural shift yeah. for organizations accustomed to working independently. But you know, that makes total sense. Yeah. The GAO report mentioned that some federal employees mm -hmm. used to working in their own lanes. Their own lanes. Yeah. I like that. Found Agile's constant communication and transparency overwhelming. Yeah, it can be a lot. Yeah. And that highlights another crucial point. Which is? Agile adoption isn't just about adopting new tools and processes, uh -huh. it requires a fundamental shift okay. in mindset and culture. Mindset and culture. It's like learning a new language. Right. You can't just memorize a phrase book. Exactly. You need to immerse yourself in the culture yeah. to truly understand it. To really get it. Exactly. And this cultural shift requires leadership commitment too. Leadership. Okay. Leaders need to champion Agile. Mm. provide resources yeah. and create an environment where teams feel empowered empowered to embrace this new way of working the gao report also pointed out yeah that simply implementing new tools without proper training oh yeah can lead to delays and frustration for sure it's like giving someone a fancy new kitchen gadget right without teaching them how to use it exactly so training is crucial absolutely for everyone involved everyone from developers right to project managers yeah. to leadership to the top so preparation is key definitely it sounds like successfully adopting agile requires a multifaceted approach yeah. Addressing both organizational culture right. and individual skills. For sure. And even with careful preparation, uh -huh. there are challenges in execution. Absolutely. Agile relies on constant adaptation yeah. and open communication, mm -hmm. which can be tricky yeah. when dealing with changing requirements. Yeah. 
and tight deadlines, uh -huh. the GAO report highlighted some specific execution challenges. Ah, we did. Like what? Things like keeping documentation updated in real time, uh -huh. managing evolving requirements, Book. and having federal customers readily available for feedback. Feedback. Agile thrives on those frequent feedback loops yeah. to ensure the right product is being built. It seems like a lot to juggle. Yeah, it can be. And how do you even measure success in an agile environment? That's a good question. Is it different from traditional projects? It is different. Okay, how so? Agile success is measured by outcomes and value delivered. Okay. Not just by checking boxes and yeah. meeting deadlines. So are you meeting customer needs? Right. Are you delivering working software frequently? Exactly. Are you constantly improving your process? Those are the questions that matter. So it's less about following a rigid plan? Much less. And more about adapting? Yeah. And responding to feedback? Yeah. To deliver real value? That's what it's all about. Okay, so we've got a sense of the agile landscape. Yeah. The challenges organizations face when adopting it uh -huh. and how success is measured. Right. But before we dive into best practices for smoother agile adoption, okay. let's take a quick breather. Sounds good. We'll be back in a moment to explore how teams and organizations yeah. can navigate this exciting yeah. and sometimes challenging world of agile. Looking forward to it. Welcome back to the deep dive. You know, yeah. it's interesting how the GAO report mm -hmm. repeatedly emphasized is the importance yeah. of leadership buy-in. Absolutely. It's not enough for leaders nope. to simply endorse Agile. Right. They need to actively champion it yeah. and model those Agile behaviors. Right. Walk, the, walk, not just talk the talk. Right. Leaders need to create an environment yeah. where teams feel empowered to experiment, to learn, uh -huh. and even make mistakes, mistakes without fear of reprisal. Right, because if teams are constantly worried yeah. about being punished for trying new things, right. they're unlikely to fully embrace the Agile mindset. Exactly. But let's get back to the practicalities uh, of Agile implementation. Yeah, yeah. What are some specific best practices? Well, one crucial practice yeah. is empowering teams. Empowering teams. Agile teams thrive. Uh-huh when they have the autonomy to make decisions okay. and manage their own work. So trust is paramount. Absolutely. Leaders need to trust their teams to do the right thing. Yeah. That means providing them with the resources and support they need, mm. but also giving them the freedom yeah. to experiment. That's right. Innovate yeah. and learn from their experiences. Yeah. Even if those experiences right. include a few missteps along the way. That's how we learn. Right, and the GAO report yeah. specifically highlighted the importance uh -huh. of having a dedicated federal employee okay. serve as the product owner. What makes that role so critical? So the product owner acts as the voice of the customer. Voice of the customer. Okay. Ensuring the team is building the right product. Okay. They need to be deeply familiar with the user needs, mm -hmm. the business requirements, yeah. and the strategic goals of the project. Got it. And they need the authority to make decisions okay. about what features get built and when. It sounds like a high stakes role. It is. What happens if the product owner yeah. isn't clearly identified right. or readily available uh -huh. or empowered to make decisions? It can create a real bottleneck in the agile process. Bottleneck, okay. Without a strong and engaged product owner. Yeah. There's a risk of confusion, uh -huh. misaligned priorities, right. and ultimately a product that fails to meet the user's needs. Or the organization's objectives. Exactly. So a dedicated and empowered product owner is key. Is non-negotiable and agile. That's right. What about communication? Communi How does that play into successful agile implementation? Communication is the lifeblood of agile teams. Lifeblood, wow. Open, honest, and frequent communication is vital okay. for keeping everyone on the same page, uh -huh. identifying and resolving issues quickly, okay. and ensuring that the team is building the right product. And I recall the GAO report mentioning several communication-related challenges yes. that federal agencies faced yeah. during their Agile transition. They did. Like, what kind of challenges? They struggled with things like okay. keeping documentation updated in real time uh -huh. and having federal customers readily available okay. to provide feedback. Your feedback is important. Very important. No. Agile relies heavily on feedback loops okay. to stay aligned with user needs right. and adjust course as needed. So those daily stand-up meetings, yeah. sprint reviews and retrospectives, uh -huh. they're not just boxes to check. No, they're not. 
They're essential for maintaining open communication and transparency. Yeah. These ceremonies, yes. as they're called in Scrum, right. are opportunities for the team to connect, yeah. share progress, mm. identify obstacles, uh -huh. and celebrate successes. Absolutely. They're also crucial for fostering a culture of continuous improvement. That's right. Always getting better. All right. So we've talked about empowering teams, yeah. having a strong product owner, uh -huh. and prioritizing open communication. Communication is key. What are the best practices? Well, another crucial practice oh. is to focus on delivering working software frequently. Working software frequently? Agile is all about delivering value to the customer okay. as quickly as possible. So no more big bang releases yeah. where you spend months or even years building a product yeah. before finally unveiling it to the world. I Ideally, no. Okay. The goal is to release working software mm -hmm. in short, iterative cycles. Iterative, okay. So you can get feedback from users early and often. Makes sense. This iterative approach not only allows you to validate your assumptions mm -hmm. and adjust course as needed, right. but it also helps to reduce risk. Reduce risk. Okay. By catching problems early on. And I remember the GAO report mentioning the need for a technical environment. Yes. That supports this iterative approach yeah. to software delivery. Your technical infrastructure right. needs to be able to handle frequent releases and updates. Frequent releases and updates. You need a system that's flexible, mm -hmm. scalable, yeah. and designed for continuous integration and deployment. It sounds like modernizing your technology stack. Often it is. Is often a prerequisite for successful agile transformation. Yeah. What about oversight and control mechanisms? Those definitely need to change as well. I so. Traditional waterfall-based controls, okay. which often rely on extensive documentation and rigid processes, yeah. are not a good fit for agile environments. So how do you maintain oversight? It's about shifting the focus okay. from process compliant to outcome-based measures. Outcome-based measures. Instead of reviewing reams of documentation yeah. or meticulously checking boxes, right. You need to be looking at whether the team is delivering working software okay. that meets customer needs uh. and aligns with business objectives. So it's about trusting the team. Trusting the team. Focusing on the value they're delivering. Exactly. And measuring success based on real world outcomes. That's right. And that can be a significant shift. It can be. For organizations that are used to a more control-oriented, right. process-driven approach. Uh -huh. Now, while we're talking about shifting mindsets okay. and embracing change, yeah. I want to dig into a concept All right. that's often mentioned in the context of agile okay. technical debt. Technical debt. Can you explain what that is? Sure. And why it's so important for agile teams to be aware of it? Technical debt is a powerful metaphor, metaphor. Okay. for the challenges that can arise. Uh, when you prioritize speed over perfection in software development. Speed over perfection. Imagine you're building a house. Building a house, okay. And to meet a tight deadline, yeah. you decide to take a few shortcuts. Shortcuts. Maybe you use cheaper materials okay. or skip some of the less visible structural elements. So you get the house built on time. You do. But you know those shortcuts are going to come back to haunt you later. Exactly. Right. In software development, mm -hmm. technical debt can accumulate in many ways. Okay. How so? Perhaps you rush a feature out the door uh -huh. without proper testing. Right or write code that's difficult to understand or maintain. Difficult to maintain. You might meet your immediate deadlines. Right. But you're creating hidden costs. Hidden costs. And potential problems for the future. So it's like incurring a debt. It is. That you'll have to pay back later. Yes. With interest. With interest. That's sure. a great analogy. And just like financial debt, uh -huh. technical debt can accumulate and become a burden. Right. If it's not managed effectively. If you don't stay on top of it. So how does technical debt manifest itself? It can manifest in various ways. Okay, like what? Bugs and errors. Okay. Slow performance. Uh-huh. Security vulnerabilities what? and difficulty adding new features Where are you? or making changes. So essentially technical debt makes your software harder to work with. It does. And can significantly slow down your development process over time. That's right. So it's a hidden tax on your future productivity. I like the a hidden tax. Right. And the longer you ignore it, uh -huh. the bigger the problem becomes. It's like letting interest accumulate on a credit card debt. Exactly. Eventually it can become overwhelming yeah. and cripple your ability to move forward. That's right. So what can agile teams do? Well, the first step is awareness. 
awareness. Teams need to understand that technical debt okay. is a natural part of software development. Natural part, okay. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes it's a strategic decision okay. to take on some technical debt uh -huh. to meet a critical deadline yeah. or deliver a key feature. So it's about making conscious decisions. It is. And being strategic about it. Exactly. The key is to not let technical debt accumulate unchecked. Unchecked. Okay. Teams need to track it, mm -hmm. prioritize it, okay. and address it regularly Regu as part of their development process. So how do you go about tracking and prioritizing technical debt? There are many approaches, okay. but a common practice is to treat technical debt items okay. like any other task in your backlog. In your backlog. Include them alongside feature requests and bug fixes. Okay. This makes the debt visible. Visible. And ensures it's considered during sprint planning. And how do you determine which technical debt items to tackle first? You need to assess the impact of the debt. Impact of the debt. Oh. Some debt is more critical than others. Right. For instance, a security vulnerability uh. is usually a higher priority than code. Okay. That's simply difficult to read, uh -huh. but doesn't pose an immediate threat. So it's about balancing the need for speed. It is. With the need for quality and maintainability. Exactly. Agile isn't about move fast and break things. Right. It's about delivering value quickly, uh -huh. but also sustainably. Sustainably? Okay. That means managing technical debt effectively mm -hmm. and making conscious trade-offs between speed and quality. Speaking of balancing speed and quality. Yeah. We touched upon a few specific development practices earlier. We did. Such as test-driven development. Yes. Continuous integration yeah. and refactoring. Right. Can you delve a bit deeper into those practices? Absolutely. And how they contribute to agile success. Let's start with test-driven development, or TDD. TDD. As we mentioned earlier, yeah. TDD involves writing tests for your code right. before you actually write the code itself. I remember you comparing it to creating a blueprint Yes. before you start building. And that analogy holds true. But writing tests first. Okay. You define the desired behavior of your code up front. Right. This not only leads to cleaner, more modular code. Cleaner, okay. But it also helps you catch errors early on. So it's like having a safety net exactly built into your development process. When you run your tests and they fail, yeah. you know there's a problem uh -huh. and you can fix it before it becomes a bigger issue. Gotcha. TDD also helps improve the overall quality of your code base over time. So TDD is all about building quality in from the start. It is. What about continuous integration? Continuous integration, or CI, CI, is a practice where developers integrate their code changes okay. into a shared repository frequently. Freco how frequently are we talking? Ideally, multiple times a day. Multiple times a day. Wow. Yeah. And the benefit of this is? It helps prevent what we call integration hell. Integration hell. When developers work in isolation for extended periods uh -huh. and then try to merge their changes. Mm -hmm. It can lead to conflicts, errors, and a lot of wasted time and effort. So CI is about keeping the code base in sync. It is. Preventing those big, messy integration events. Exactly. CI ensures that everyone is working with the latest version of the code mm -hmm. and that any conflicts are identified and resolved quickly. Quickly. This also helps ensure okay. that the code base is always in a releasable state. Releasable state. Meaning you could potentially deploy a working version of your software at any time. At any time. Wow. Yeah. So CI promotes speed, uh -huh. but also quality and predictability. That's right. Now, what about refactoring? Refactoring. I remember you comparing it to cleaning up your house. Yeah. Or reorganizing your closet. That's a good analogy. What is refactoring? Refactoring is about improving the internal structure of your code. Internal structure. Okay, okay. without changing its external behavior. Yeah. You're not adding new features. Right. But you're making the code cleaner. Cleaner. More organized wow. and easier to understand and maintain. And why is this so important in an agile environment? Agile embraces change. Change, yeah. And as software evolves, yes. the code base can become messy. Messy. And difficult to work with. Yeah. Refactoring helps to keep your code clean, okay. modular, uh -huh. and easy to understand, right. which makes it easier to add new features, gotcha. fix bugs, yeah. and adapt to changing requirements down the road. So it's like preventative maintenance for your code base. It is. Ensuring it stays healthy and adaptable over time. Exactly. And when you combine refactoring with TDD and CI, yeah. 
you create a powerful set of practices. You do. For building high quality, maintainable software in an agile environment. That's right. So these practices work together synergistically they do. to support agile principles. Mm -hmm. They're all about embracing change. Yeah. Delivering value quickly and sustainably mm -hmm. and building software that's flexible and adaptable over time. Exactly. Now, while we're on the topic of software development practices yeah. and how they align with agile principles, yeah. I think it's time we address a term okay. that's often mentioned in the same breath as agile. What's that? DevOps. DevOps. How do you see these two concepts fitting together? We've been deep diving into this world of agile, you know, yeah. exploring its frameworks, the yeah. challenges of adoption, right. and some key practices that make it tick. Uh -huh. Now, you mentioned DevOps. I did. It feels like one of those buzzwords. Yeah. Everyone's using, but few truly understand. Right. How does it relate to everything we've discussed about agile? So DevOps is a natural evolution of agile principles. Okay. Think of it this way. Okay. Agile focuses on the development side, mm -hmm. while DevOps extends that agility yeah. to the entire software delivery life cycle. The entire life cycle. Including operations. So it's about bridging the gap between those who build the software yeah. and those who keep it running. Okay, so I'm starting to see the connection here. Uh huh. But why is this DevOps thing so important? Okay, so... Especially in the context of Agile. In today's fast-paced world, yeah. organizations need to deliver software quickly and reliably. Quickly and reliably. The old way of doing things, okay. where developers tossed code over the wall to operations mm -hmm. and hoped for the best, right. simply doesn't cut it anymore. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So DevOps helps organizations become more agile and responsive to change. It does. Even beyond the development phase. That's right. By automating processes, yeah. Im improving communication, uh -huh. and fostering fostering a culture of shared responsibility. Shared responsibility. DevOps enables organizations to release software more frequently. Yes. With fewer errors. Fewer errors. And with faster feedback loops. Faster feedback loops, it's about creating a culture of continuous delivery and improvement. So how does DevOps relate to those technical practices we discussed earlier? Like continuous integration and test-driven development. They're all part of the same toolkit. You are? Continuous integration is a core component of DevOps. Right. Ensuring that code changes are integrated and tested frequently. Frequently, right. Preventing those integration nightmares we talked about. Right. Integration hell. Exactly. And test-driven development also plays a key role. Uh-huh. Helping ensure that code is well-tested and reliable. Reliable. Okay. Before it goes live. Before it goes live. So it's all connected. It is. Agile, DevOps, TDD, CI. It's all one big happy family. They're all pieces of the same puzzle. Yeah. Working together to create a more efficient and effective way uh -huh. to deliver software. That's the goal. And as organizations continue to embrace Agile and DevOps principles, yeah. we can expect to see even more innovation and evolution. Absolutely. In the way software is developed and delivered. The future is bright. The future of software development is all about agility. The agility. Collaboration. Collaboration. And continuous improvement. Continuous improvement always getting better. Well, that's an exciting thought. <laughs> yes, it is. But before we get carried away with the future of software, okay. let's bring it back down to earth for our listeners. All right. We've covered a lot of ground today. We have. Exploring this agile landscape. A lot of ground. From frameworks to challenges to best practices. That's agile for you. What are some key takeaways? First and foremost, remember that agile is a mindset. A mindset. It's not just a set of processes or tools. Not just tools, okay. It's about embracing change. Embracing change. Collaborating effectively mm -hmm. and focusing on delivering value to your customer. Delivering value, it's about people and culture. It is. Just as much as it is about technology and processes. Absolutely. And secondly, there's no one size fits all approach to agile. Yeah. Different organizations will find different frameworks and practices. Different strokes for different folks. That work best for them. That's right. The key is to experiment, learn, and adapt continuously. Always be learning. Always be adapting. And to remember that Agile is a journey. It is. Not a destination. Not a destination. There will be bumps in the road. There will be. But the rewards of delivering value quickly and continuously yeah. make it worth the effort. It's worth it. As we wrap up this deep dive into Agile, right. we encourage you to keep exploring, yeah. keep learning, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries, Push those boundaries of what's possible. That's right. Until next time. Remember to stay Agile and uh, join this rowdy bunch for another episode soon. 
Remember, you can always get additional training if you go on down to the praiseion.com website, P-R-E-I-Z-I-O-N.com. If you're looking for training, coaching, mentoring in the world of Agile, you're going for that next Scrum Master job, product owner role, or any leadership position, go on down to pmanonymous.com and we'll be extremely delighted to help you achieve your goal. Fellow deep divers. See you next time.